From the beach to the ballot box. Germans are heading for a general election, but things in their country aren't quite as sunny as they seem. Despite good growth figures, the poverty gap in Germany is widening dramatically. So many people in this city have no work. And uh, when they have no work, they have no money in the house. Child poverty is on the increase in the supposedly wealthy West, as well as the underprivileged East. These days I have to feed each of my children on three dollars a day. Poor connectivity threatens German competitiveness on the world stage. We need more internet in Germany so we get more startups, so we get uh, more innovation. And Germany is only just beginning to address its ticking demographic time bomb. We don't have people to work here, so we try to get people from other countries. I travel across Germany, perceived from the outside as being wealthy and successful, to ask people inside the country if they feel their politicians are really steering them on the right course. German sun worshippers in pole position by the water's edge. A summertime cliché. But this is not the Costa del Sol. I'm on a beachfront in Berlin at the Wannsee Lake. To my surprise, most Germans are holidaying at home this year. Some feeling the pinch of tighter economic times. But in general, people's minds here are focused at home with a closely fought parliamentary election widely seen as Europe's most significant this year, just around the corner. My feeling is that politicians have lost their focus. If you look to the states of the roads, if you're looking to the states of uh, public uh, installations like rail, uh, um, railway stations, like bus stops, all those little tiny things, we are missing investments. I'm a teacher at a secondary school in Lower Saxony. There's always a great debate around what should be done to improve schools. Smaller classes, more teachers and so on. None of that ever happens. Germany is giving too much money to the other countries. Policy must uh, be uh, for the people. Of course, it's not easy to talk politics while you're relaxing on a sunny beach, but wherever they are in Germany in the lead up to their general elections, Germans know that looks can be deceptive. Their country is often viewed as the financial savior of others in economic crisis, like Spain or Cyprus. Meanwhile, back at home, Germany is not always the well-oiled, wealthy, super-functioning machine it appears from the outside. Not that Germans would know that from listening to the speeches of their leading politicians. They tend to praise Germany as the stable, successful export nation it is. Now. But there's scant mention of the looming domestic issues that threaten to derail this industrial giant in the long term. Take the ageing population here, for example. Germany is facing demographic bust. I've travelled to the picturesque city of Munich. Over the next 10 years or so, the labour force in Germany is set to drop by six and a half million. That's the equivalent of losing every single worker in this southern German region. But for now, it's happy times at the local hairdressers. Though this young man is not so sure. It'll be lonely at the top when he grows up. Germany has the oldest population in Europe, the second oldest in the world after Japan. There won't be enough Germans to run their country's successful businesses or power its manufacturing machine in a few years' time. The federal government has been criticised for being slow to react leaving individuals
to grab the initiative. They need people in all kinds of business, whatever, they're looking for people. You can't get no employees. Why is that? Uh, I guess we just have not enough people in the country. Business level is so high and we don't have people to work here. So we try to get people from other countries and you hear every day they uh, don't have uh, work in Spain, they don't have work in uh, Portugal or in, even in Greek, anywhere and they come from all over to Germany to work there. German businesses are increasingly sending representatives south, recruiting talent in countries devastated by the Euro crisis. I first left my home in Galicia and went to Palma de Mallorca looking for a job, but then I saw an advert looking for Spaniards to come here to work. I've come to this Munich salon to speak to Olaf Perez Hernandez, a 28-year-old hairdresser from Spain, where one out of every two youngsters is out of work. I left Spain hoping to make a life here after being unemployed for five years. As a young person in Spain, you can just about survive. Here in Germany, the standard of living is much higher, and wherever I go here, I see signs in shop windows saying they need staff. So different to what you see in Spain. Germany is already home to the highest number of immigrants of any other European country. They haven't always received the warmest of welcomes. The immigration issue has consistently been fertile ground for the far right here. First to formally recognize the German employer's race against the demographic clock was the head of this Bavarian trade association. I asked him why businesses aren't training unemployed German youngsters rather than bringing in skilled labor from abroad. There are hardly any unemployed young people in Germany, only 2.1% here in Bavaria, and that counts as full youth employment. There aren't enough young Germans to fill apprenticeship schemes. But are Germans ready for a new influx of immigrants? It already has the highest number of any other European country. This has nothing to do with politics. It's about human beings and about the economy. This isn't a question of foreigners coming into Germany unless the media decides to turn it into that debate. This is what the European Union is all about, the free movement of labour. Like every economy, the German economy needs an adequate labour force to maintain living standards. But while Germany imports skilled workers from abroad to maintain its status as a global economic power, at home poverty levels are rising. As I discovered in this formerly industrial, now almost derelict area of northwest Germany. Germany is a wealthy export nation, the largest economy in Europe. But that doesn't mean that everyone who lives here is well off. In fact, poverty levels are rising. There's no national minimum wage in Germany and across much of the country, the middle classes are being squeezed. This region, the Ruhrgebiet, used to be the motor of the booming German economy, of wealthy Western Germany. But heavy industry has had its heyday, and now this place has been dubbed the biggest slum in Germany. One, two, three. Up to three million youngsters live in poverty in Germany, immigrants and non-immigrants alike. That number is growing fastest here in the Ruhrgebiet. These boys came to Germany from Ghana, their families hoping for a better life. But now they star in the growing ranks of Germany's poor. Hello, my name is Regina. Hello, my name is Chelsea. Hello, my name is Gideon. Hello, my name is Mavis. I go to Imazat. So and this is our dining room, but most important is that we're together and this is a family situation. Imasat, which roughly translates as always full, is a citizen's initiative. 
It helps feed underprivileged children in the rundown, troubled city of Duisburg, known nationwide for its spiraling crime and unemployment rates. The centre relies wholly on food donations from local businesses, on the donation of educational material to help children with their homework, and on a staff of volunteers. Rubber boots. <laughs> The parents of children here asked not to be filmed. They said they were ashamed of being needy. Many of them won't be voting in the upcoming election. They don't believe their voices count. What social problems do you notice in your hometown of Duisburg that affects the children? Yeah, many people here have no work. Um, in this city, before, a long time before, we have much of companies and uh, there are enough work here, but now some of them are closed and uh, we, are, we have so many people in this city have no work. And uh, when they have no work, they have no money in the house and this can't be a reason why the kids are here. But Germany's a rich country. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I don't know it, if Germany is rich or not. But I see all the parents here, I see the children and this tell me the children, they're coming here, not rich. I've come to one of the most troubled neighbourhoods of Duisburg. People outside the area avoid it altogether. It's known for frequent flare-ups with the growing number of immigrants living here. Rap, like this song by artist Eco Fresh, is often used by minorities in Germany, particularly the country's ethnic Turks, who make up 5% of Germany's population, to express their anger at the xenophobia and marginalization they experience. As if they wanted to prove their neighborhood's credentials, a group of local youngsters slashed our car tires while we were filming here. All political parties in Germany agree more must be done to pull people out of poverty. But income inequality is reported to be growing faster here than in any other Western European economy. Poverty in work is on the increase. In this deregulated labour market, with no national minimum wage, 7.5 million Germans are paid less than 500 US dollars a month. Germany's poor say they're cynical about their politicians' pre-election promises. I get angry and I despair when I see Germany throwing money in all directions at foreign countries that have gone bankrupt. Those are our taxes. It's our money. Why not spend it to make things a bit easier here at home? Bigot Schocht is a widow. She has five children of school age and is dependent on state benefits. Along with millions of other Germans, Birgit has faced painful cuts in welfare over the last few years. Germany's centre-right government doesn't just preach austerity abroad, it practices it at home. Living on welfare in Germany is tough. These days I have to feed each of my children on three dollars a day. I'm supposed to give them healthy food, but I can only afford meat once a week and fruit two or three times a month. We can just about get by each month. We have to cut back on food to buy school books. My kids want a bright future, but further education for my eldest means taking things away from my younger ones. I feel abandoned by the authorities here. That's not the image we have of Germany outside the country. It all looks very different on paper. Yes, very different. Germany is rich, right? All those in search of a better life want to come to Germany. But Germany isn't so rich, at least not the Germany my family knows. My mum's life is really hard. We children try to help her, to give her courage. I just want my family to be happy. I'd love for us to find a way so I can study. I want to be a nurse one day. I want to get a good job and to make good money. In that way, I can help my brothers and sisters and look after my family properly.